first step is to establish ownership and or was legal authority to be conducting that business. So your name doesn't necessarily have to be on the title for you to sell it? Not necessarily because you oh. can be the power of attorney for the owner. This episode is brought to you by the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. Do you have a property for sale, but you just don't have any takers? It's been sitting there for months, maybe years. Maybe you're doing it all wrong. There are strategic things you can do to get that property sold quickly. I'm Kalila Reynolds and welcome to The Property Source, powered by Remax Elite Realty. On this episode, we're talking to Remax Elite Realty agent, Andrew Duncan. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to The Property Source. Hi, thanks for having me, Kalila. So I hear you're the man if I want to list my property. Is that true? First of all, you're the person I should come to? Well, sure. My <laughs> job is to, to, to help who I can help. That's how I do it. I try and help as many persons as I can. Awesome. All right. So let's say I have a property that I want to sell. Maybe I inherited it from my parents or for some reason I want to sell. What's the first step? So the first step um, from a professional perspective is we try to establish ownership or who has legal authority to sell the property. So somebody calls me about a property they want to sell. The first thing I will ask is for a copy of the title mm. to look at that to see whose name is on the title. And also, because in some cases, your name might not be on the title, but one, you can maybe have a power of attorney mm. or through a will. So for instance, as you just said, parents, you inherited this property. So maybe your name is not on the property as yet, but there is a probate. Mm. So that's when we'd find out about that. If a probate is done, if there was a will, or in some cases I have actually sold properties through the administrator general. Mm. So the first step is to establish ownership and or was legal authority to be conducting that business. So your name doesn't necessarily have to be on the title for you to sell it? Not necessarily because you oh. can be the power of attorney for the owner. Understood. Okay, so you have to go through all of that and make sure that the person has the right to sell the property so nobody can come and try to sell my property without my permission. Definitely, because we're professionals. Right. It doesn't bode well for us at Remax to be advertising or marketing a property and then when say for instance you are interested in it you call us you went you view the property you submit your offer you hear that your offer is accepted and then when it goes to contract you pay down your deposit you're spending money doing survey doing valuation then or oh, you're finding out through your attorney that hey hold on one moment mm -hmm. the name on the sales agreement that's not the name we're seeing associated with ownership our legal <laughs> rights to do this kind of transaction wow so that would be very embarrassing and that that has happened before hasn't it well not, i'm sure not, not to not, you not, not, not <laughs> us, no. we, but i'm sure there's a reason this protocol was established because it happened in the past definitely and which is why it's important for sellers and purchasers as well to deal with professionals who will first do their due diligence before advertising a property so due diligence is step number one. What's step, step number, number two? What do I do next? After we've so, proven that I have the right to sell the property, what's next? So first step is proving that you have legal authority. The next step would be to do a physical inspection of the property. So that physical inspection, whether if it's a piece of land, I mean, the owner don't need to be there with us. If it's a house, then we need proper access to the house to be able to see the condition, take photos, etc., etc. For some properties, we would recommend getting a valuation done. While for some properties, based on the market and our expertise, we would be able to provide you with an opinion as mm -hmm. it relates to pricing. Uh, so the owner can either choose to do a valuation or you can choose to accept our recommendation of pricing. So after pricing, then the next step would be for us to agree because this would be like a partnership we're going into with the owner so the owner would be ultimately the one making all the decisions so i can provide recommendations but the owner is the one who always make the final decision right so i can recommend pricing the property at say 50 million 
but then the owner can say, okay, Andrew, um, I, I like that. I like that. I'll work with that. Or they can say, no, I, I want another opinion. Let me get a valuation done. And they get the valuation done. And if there's a difference, then they can decide that, you know, I want to try it at X or Y. Or they can just, you can give them a recommendation of 50 million and they have it that I want 70 million for this property. And mm-hmm. I will not sell it if I'm not getting 70 million. Mm-hmm. So the next step is determining pricing. And once we determine pricing, then we can have our contract signed and we can go on the market with the property. So I think we missed a step. So before all of that, we contact your REMAX agent first, right? <laughs> no, the first step is contact your agent. Right. That's the first So step. first thing I want to list my property, first thing I got to do is call, call you. Call your agent, yeah. And definitely. then you take me through the other steps. So definitely. I call you and then you... Do your due diligence to find out if I have the permission to sell the property and then valuation. And then you said third is contract. Sure. So what's what's that process entail? All right. So the contract is really the agreement between the seller or the person who has the legal author to sell and the real estate brokerage. So the contract basically in a nutshell entails the brokerage having the authority to represent the seller for in in advertising the property with a view to get a sale so that will speak to the terms of the contract as it relates to commission generally commission is a percentage most times it's between three and six percent depending on the type of property and once we have that agreement then we know that the responsibility of the agent is to advertise the property facilitate showings of the property and then if there is interested persons negotiate a, a sale mm-hmm. through making an offer to the owner who can then accept counter offer or reject based on the numbers that we're looking at so you said the the commission is usually between three and six percent depending on the type of property what do you mean is that residential versus commercial or what what influences the commission that you would earn all right, so it's standard practice now for developments, especially when we're getting multiple units to sell for the same person. Generally, at least five units that will accept a 3% commission based on the bulk of business that we're getting from mm-hmm. the one person. In other instances, between 5 and 6%. For most lots that I sell, it's generally a 6% commission. While for buildings, whether house or commercial building, it's generally a 5% commission. So that's more or less what we should expect if we're trying to sell. Definitely. Okay. All right. So now you have the property. Well, the property, I should say, is in your hands. You don't have the property. It's in your hands. Definitely. What are you going to do or what should I expect of you in trying to sell this property on my behalf? So in the initial conversation, relisting the property, I would generally lay out the expectation on my end as well as sh- share my thoughts and the expectation for the seller. So I will have certain expectation as it relates to access, getting access to the property and what kind of timelines I would expect to be able to get access. So for instance, somebody reaches out to me and wants to view the property. I want to have an expectation that I know that I need 24 hours notice, I need three days notice. Property might be vacant or it might be tenanted. Or you might have some relatives living there or you, the owner, might be the one living there and you probably don't want to be there when shows right. are being done because you don't want prospective buyers to know. You, you just want to stay out of the picture. So we discussed that, those things as it relates to access and showing we discuss expectation of, of a sale. So based on my knowledge of the market, each property that I am about to list, I will know the likelihood of a fast sale or it might be on the market for a while. So I basically share those expectations with the owner. I'll say to you that, hey, based on my knowledge of the market and what's happening now, this property we might be on the market for a while. Mm. We might be on the market for a year. It might, it might take us a few years. It might be there for a while because this is not necessarily a hot bread, as they would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to a property that 
hey, don't be surprised that the moment I put this property in the market, Gone. we have 15 people <clears throat> mm -hmm. lining up at the gate. You might even see because there are times when persons are very aggressive. I have properties that I have listed and the owners can, cannot live there in peace afterwards. Hmm. Persons are just turning up Wow! at the gate, trying to get in, trying to get tired of a crowd. So it's about laying that kind of expectation, the likelihood, I think, based on our price point and the property of what we will expect going forward as it relates to some of the activities to try and help sell the property. So I am doing a lot of mail out now where once I get select properties or a group of properties, I'm mailing out to our entire database, which is very effective. That's exposure. Also, we do open houses, collaboration with the banks and those open houses. So we tap into the bank's database. So we do that kind of activity as well. Social media is, is a thing now. Mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest social media <laughs> fan, but I, I do a bit of social media and with mixed results. Mm -hmm. But signage on the property as well, depending on the owner and the situation on the property, because there are a lot of owners, especially if they live at the property, you don't want the neighbor to. Mm -hmm. but it's out there on the internet, but you know, it's kind of direct when a sign is there, person's just stopping by all the time mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So it's about that agreement. Do we need a sign or do you want me to put a sign mm -hmm. there? So everything it's about an agreement with the owner because ultimately I am working for the owner. Here is your Remax property of the week. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Duncan, Realtor Associate with Remax Elite Realty. Today we are at Palm Beach Runaway Bay in St. Anne and we are on this exclusive gated community compound with only 28 units, 22 villas and 6 apartments right on the beach. Really lovely beach here at Palm Beach in Runaway Bay. This is in close proximity to Duns River Falls, Dolphin Cove, Mystic Mountains, and all the other great attractions in St. Anne. But within this development, you have everything at your fingertips. You will have a swimming pool, gym, jogging trail, tennis courts, and the units are really ultra modern with iron finishes, and very spacious. So the units, the villas are five bedrooms with a two bedroom helper's quarter. The five bedroom is sectioned into a four bedroom main house and a one bedroom standalone villa. So of the 28 units, only three units remain available, two villas and an apartment. The apartment is over 4,000 square feet, four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, and the market for $1,650,000 US dollars. The villas, two villas remain available. They are on the market for two million six hundred and twenty-five thousand US dollars. Total square footage exceeds five thousand five hundred square feet. So this is ultimate luxury living in Jamaica along the north coast on the beach, Palm Beach Runaway Bay. Do not miss out on owning one of these. As you can see, the development is very much under construction. Expected completion end of twenty twenty-four. Only three units remain available. Prices start at $1,650,000 US dollars. Call me today to get your unit at 876-995-5444 or 876-412-0113. For more details, you can also email me at aduncan at remax-elite.com.jm. So what makes a property in today's market very attractive? Like what would make my property sell quickly? First real estate, the first rule of real estate is location. Mm. Um, so you cannot avoid that. So depending on where the property is, that's the first thing. And then after location, it's about price. Mm -hmm. Is this a practical price? Does it make sense? So those are the two main things that will determine if your property is likely to sell and then there are some types of properties too that just generally don't do well on the market like what number one property that don't do well on the market these days it's large unfinished houses mm. because i was shared with a colleague earlier today that's one of the only scenarios where basically nobody really wins in that sort of scenario because generally an owner was selling a large unfinished house basically would have spent extra amount to get it to where it is and they are now trying to re recoup what they have spent in it mm -hmm. 
and a lot of the times you realize that based on what they have spent and based on the projected market value at this point a buyer would not be prepared to spend that kind of money for it mm -hmm. and if they do and then they have to spend some more money to modify it or to finish it you find out that most times the valuation is not matching back to all the money spent on it so that's one of those are some of the hardest properties to sell so would you say it makes sense to just finish the house and then try sell it i know sometimes why people try to sell it is because they run out of money <laughs> definitely <laughs> as well as cha challenges with contractors with uh, workmen with you know some of the time the trade men in jamaica they really let themselves down mm -hmm. and you know persons are a lot of our persons doing real estate in jamaica they are not physically here they're overseas and they send their money relying on persons to get this done that done and then when they come and check out the progress it's that's not, true it's nowhere near where they were expecting so that's a common challenge but notwithstanding that sometimes real estate unfortunately is this thing that most times you win sometimes you lose as well mm. what's the easiest type of property to sell right now what's hot bread just gone hot bread is any house along the north coast in a gated community that's priced properly that's mm. close to the ocean or has ocean view that's hot bread very hot bread you would call it who's buying it the unfortunate thing is that a lot of the properties locals cannot afford so unfortunately persons in the diaspora they are the ones doing most of the purchasing now well at least it's still jamaicans definitely a lot of jamaicans abroad yeah. are buying yes yeah, mostly jamaicans from experience mostly jamaicans rarely you see non-jamaicans buying well, most of the purchases is being done by Jamaicans who have lived overseas for 20, 30, 40 years. They want something here they are planning to return home fully soon. Hmm. What about the corporate area? All these apartments are going on, the quote unquote luxury apartments. Are they really selling? Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> we have been having this conversation for years. They are still selling, but based on our projections, we just cannot see where that will continue for the foreseeable future because it's just it's just it's just a lot of the same kind of product mm. and from an investment perspective i'm not really sure some of them you're really getting the returns that that you would have bought it for mm -hmm. so you'll probably see over time a lot of them coming back on the market resale by the owner because for instance if they bought it for investment and you're not getting the returns on the investment that are projected then that's that's the good thing about real estate it's this continuous cycle it will never stop somebody bought something for for that purpose it's not serving that purpose they sell it and the person they're selling it to will try it and you see that it works or it doesn't work mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. sure there there is there is a surplus of apartments in kingston the corporate area and they are still being bought by a lot of persons in the diaspora as well so how do i make my property more attractive for sale if i'm trying to sell quickly if you're trying to sell quickly um standard things like painting the property and allowing it to look bright and fresh i think that's the first thing that we would generally recommend a property that looks bright and sh new and shiny and crisp no it's not new but it just gives that kind leaves right. that kind of impression on you that this is a nice new shiny thing it's moving ready as you would say so once it looks moving ready then that's the quickest way to sell it because nobody wants to spend 50 million and then spend 10 more million fixing it up mm -hmm, exactly nobody <laughs> wants to be doing that exactly right so when it comes to advertising you said that you as the agent that's your purview that's what you do definitely um can I, and the brokerage. can I still also do my own advertising? Well, generally, we always push to get an exclusive listing or what we call a MLS, multiple listing services listing, where that kind of listing, it's listed through one agent or one brokerage, but it gives exposure to the entire real estate database here in Jamaica because it's been displayed on all the other affiliate companies website which at this point is more than a hundred companies so it's displayed on all those sites plus it feeds to realtor.com which is probably 
the number one worldwide real estate site that purchasers go to when they're looking to buy properties all over the world so when we're doing all of that and then other marketing that we might do signage collaborations social media sponsored ads mail outs all of that if we're doing all of that then the owner really has no need to to be trying anything mm -hmm. plus the mls agreement would speak would speak to the brokerage or the agent getting paid regardless of who brings the buyer oh so i don't see why so you have to give yourself would, extra work yeah it would be working you're gonna and get then paid you anyway. pay me anyways right however there is another option which is an non-exclusive listing but i can tell you vividly that agents are not keen to take non-exclusive listings because our job is to try and sell the property mm -hmm. and then at the end of the transaction we are paid from the proceeds of sale we don't answer any upfront advances or help us to do this help us to do that no there are no payments coming out of pocket from the owner so but what does the non-exclusive listing mean that means anybody any realtor can can take it on how does that work so in cases owners like you asked earlier might be trying to sell the property on their own to avoid paying commission mm -hmm. but they might say you know what if you bring me a buyer i'll pay you mm -hmm. so basically in a nutshell that's what the non-exclusive listing is about mm -hmm. so there is no exclusivity to it you, you are not obligated to pay if the agent that said agent that you have that agreement with does not bring you a buyer so mm -hmm. you're allowed to do whatever you want if 10 other agent comes to you approach you with a buyer you can engage with them knowing that you will not be obligated to pay to the other agent who has this non-exclusive contract but then that takes away your motivation definitely so which is the conversation that i've always said it to almost all owners who engage me about real estate that you don't necessarily have to give me andrew duncan your property to list but if you really want the result find a good agent there are many of us out here find a good agent stick with that agent and if it's not working with that agent there's always the option of cancelling mm. there's a contract but contracts can be rescinded so for instance you give an agent your property mls and you just you're not liking the vibe you're not liking the energy call a meeting with the agent and try to fix it if it cannot be fixed then you can cancel the listing mm -hmm. but i would generally recommend as you said before doing an exclusive listing because without an exclusive listing the brokerage or the agent will not be so motivated because they know one that they are competing with the owner and also critically the owner has this unfair advantage mm -hmm. because the fact that you have to pay us a commission you can then advertise at a lower price than i can mm. and still end up with the same amount or even more mm -hmm. so that's even an advantage that the owner would have over the agent that would make a, an agent who takes what he or she does seriously just look at it and say no i'm not going to be putting much effort in this right because i might i might spend all this money i might do all that marketing i might put all that energy in this and when i bring a buyer I say, oh you know um yesterday i tom find somebody came, mm. tom came and we're doing it how much, how much did he offer you? Oh, he offered me 50 million, but you told me you only take less than 60. Mm -hmm. Remember, I have to pay you. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. So, I would generally say to persons who are looking at that kind of scenario, that sure, you can try You can try it first, see if you can get a buyer. And then if you, if you don't get a buyer and you want me to assist you with it, then you come back to me and let's do an exclusive contract, a serious contract. Because I am a professional, I take what I do very seriously. And the fact that I'm going out there doing all that work, not guaranteeing payment, because mm -hmm. payment is only guaranteed when there's a sale. Mm -hmm. That means that I want to have something to say that once there's a sale, I will be paid. Mm -hmm. Seems fair. Very fair in my opinion. Uh, who takes the nice pretty pictures of the properties? Do I do that as the owner or do you do that? can be either but generally the practice is the agent is the one who is responsible for photos and all the marketing materials but okay. there are some owners who are very specific uh, i have these nice pictures these are the pictures i want you to use because i want my property to be represented in a certain way that's fine as well 
Okay, so that comes under marketing. You guys take care of that as sure. well. So. If I'm, so I, I like to watch HGTV and TLC and these shows, yeah. right? I know you, um, you can stage a property sure. for sale. Do you guys do that too? Is that included in marketing, staging a property? Um, it can, it can. It all depends on the property and what's at play here. So we can, we can assist with that. That's optional. That's not like that's an extra cost because you have to rent furniture and whatnot, right? Yeah, if that's if that's required, that would be an extra cost. Mm -hmm. And you know, those extra costs would be the owners. All right. How do you ensure that a viewing goes smoothly? Like, what do you do when you're walking a potential buyer through the property? Well, one, you cannot ensure a viewing goes smoothly mm -hmm. because a viewing go goes smoothly has to do with the interest of the prospective buyer and yes there are generally things that you try to get in place ensure the, the the space is free of clutter and yeah you don't want to be seeing certain things like underwears and you know undesirables you don't want to be seeing those things garbage garbage and you know clutter mess place being untidy and all of that so yes you want to eliminate all of that but then a prospective purchaser can be there and you in the back of your head as an agent think, all right, I've had my bases covered. And they just see something like <laughs> a column being where they don't like it and that becomes a major issue and they mm -hmm. no longer want the house because of a simple thing. Mm -hmm. It's simple for you, but for them it's it's a major thing. So you would want to ensure that at all times you're putting your best foot forward, you present the property in the best possible light, I like the good things about it and it will take you, the rest take care of itself. All right. So now that we've gone through all of that, we've found a buyer. What is the rest of the process? What should I expect at the point that we've found this buyer? They've uh, I've accepted their offer and we're ready to close the sale. All right. So it all depends. So if it's a cash purchase or mortgage, um, the next step now in Jamaican real estate an attorney is critical, especially for the seller. For a buyer, attorney is kind of optional. We generally strongly recommend that the buyer gets his or own, or own attorney as well. But for the seller, an attorney is critical because once we have a buyer, it's now over to the attorney who will be doing the conveyance in or the transfer of ownership. So that process, unfortunately, generally takes anywhere between 60 to 120 days. Um, and the contract is only, that process only really starts when there's a signed agreement between the buyer who will sign the contract, pay a deposit, generally 5 to 10%, and then it goes over to the seller who now signs that same contract, which was prepared by his or her own attorney. So I would say the time frame between an offer being accepted and a signed contract, I would generally give between two to four weeks because a prudent attorney would advise her or buyer to get a survey done and or evaluation done of the property. So that due diligence process can take up to two to four weeks as well as negotiating certain critical terms in the contract. So once there is a contract signed, all of that due diligence is done, everything checks out for the buyer, they sign the contract, pay their deposit, it's sent over to the seller will then sign. And so we have a valid contract now. After that valid contract, then you can expect closing within 60 to 120 days. Can a seller change his or her mind? After a contract, no. Once you sign a contract, the buyer can sue for a specific performance. Mm -hmm. uh, so a contract is there for the protection of both parties. Just like if the buyer wants to pull out, then the seller, in some cases, depending on the reason and the type of contract, the seller can forfeit the deposit. So the, the contract is there for the protection of both. So once the contract is signed, that's it. That's it, uh, unless unforeseen. And if the buyer or the seller can agree with the other side doing what they're doing. But if there can be no agreement, the seller just want just wake up tomorrow and say, hey, I don't, I don't, I no longer want to sell this house. After I have signed a contract, paid my deposit, spent money on valuation and survey and all those things, no, then the, the, the purchaser's attorney would be advising them that, hey, we can sue for specific performance here. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks for having me. Remax 
Jamaica presents the premier real estate conference and expo April 14 to 16 at the Jamaica Pegasus. Three exciting days, local and international speakers, over 80 booths, entertainment, and more. Remax Jamaica premier real estate expo and conference April 14 to 16. Major sponsors, Pinnacle Development, Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Edgecam Jamaica Limited, RJR Communications Group. Call us now at 876-835-1197. Visit the Remax website for more. Are you considering transferring to an internationally accredited university? No need to look any further. Make the right choice by transferring to the UCC. Undergraduate students who have successfully completed college courses at another institution may transfer their credits at any time to the UCC in order to complete an accredited degree and gain access to very attractive career opportunities available to current students and graduates. Our local, regional, and international career services partners will work closely closely with each student to explore and identify high-paying virtual and in-person career opportunities, jobs and internships across the Caribbean and the U.S. Visit our website ucc.edu.jm for details. That's it for this episode of The Property Source powered by Remax Elite Realty. Follow Remax Elite Realty all over social media and remember to like this video and share with your friends. Also subscribe to this channel to keep up with all things real estate. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Let's get this money. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean.